Hello, my friends. Today we are talking about the musical nib. A nib that is unknown to most Fontaine Pen enthusiasts. Often we hear about the musical nib without ever having understood what is and how it is made. Today I have with me a Platinum Century 3776 with a musical nib and I will try to explain to you how it is used in musical writing and in everyday writing. Not all company have a musical nib in their arrangement because this very special nib that is used for music but also provides a lot of variety to calligraphy. It exists in the Sailor, Payload and Platinum Fontaine pens and each nib is different in quality. The Platinum one is a rigid nib, versatile, um, smooth and all around nib. These, uh, are the two adjectives that define it best of all. There are two scores with me. Let's start with this one, uh, which is the famous Bursets by Frédéric Chopin. Music notation is a code that requires a lot of stroke variations. We are used to seeing it printed uh, with typefaces, but we must also take a step back when uh, there was no printing and it was written by hand. For example, the little needs a certain depth, where the number uh, of the work uh, or the indication of the time have a different style. The rhythm of the treble cliff and the bass cliff, um, bass key, uh, also have a different character. Music is made up of the notes that make up the musical alphabet. We write many musical notes, such as this uh, one, uh, it comes a full body, uh, head, and thin legs. We need a special nib that helps us to make a tight circle with maximum ease and smoothness, without jamming and a thin vertical stroke. But we also need a large horizontal line to connect the legs of the notes. Look at how many scenes in the score large, small, for example, the number five and the two indicate the uh, fingers that play. Here instead uh, mm, is other information, the symbol of the piano pedal. Uh, this is an arc that links several musical notes. This is uh, even a bigger arc. Um, then there are the symbols of the sharp and the flat accidentals and many other notation that recur in the score. For example, uh, you can see that this is a trill, as it's our own particular writing, and you can observe how each indication has a different character and style. I choose the score of Brahms to show you the theme which is printed in board. Uh, look here. Uh, and, but we do not find the same fun during the piece. There is an italic style, a block capitals, an upper and lower case, because each style indicates something and does not want to create confusion. In addition, the heart also holds important notes and not be forgotten, such as the page numbers used by the teacher to indicate to the student where to repeat, and even the numbers of the bars that you can see uh, inscribed in the circle. Uh, observe how many minute notes are written in a such a small space. If I have to write all these different annotations, I need numerous spans, each with a different gradation, a stab nib for the title, a fine nib for the indications of the fingers and strokes, a cursive nib for the indication of the time, take a long time to open, uh, close, write, take the pen back, this is impossible. You need a single nib that can do all this. If I want to try to write music with a stab nib, things would be fine in one way, but less so in the other. But you can see the nib has its own shape and directs the mark where it wants it. N not good, not good for music.
In fact, uh, you all know that the stab has the characteristic of having a very full body vertical mark and a thinner horizontal one. The stab nib has a tip made more or less like these. The corners are a little rounded to make writing more fluid. Unfortunately, however, when we go to draw the notes holding the fountain pen in this position, we cannot do it well because the nib does not made to work this way. Stab nib is good for writing the title, but is not effective when I have to write the small number. I have to do some virtuosity to insert the number that indicates the fingers in the middle of the notes. Now I take fountain pen with a fine nib and I'm able to write, okay? But it takes too long to mark a musical note. This nib is fine for making the additional cut on the note head uh, or for making its leg, but when I have to mark the mark, I'm back with my problem. Okay, for this is good. A fine nib, an extra fine nib, but not for all. Perhaps this gradation suits me uh, when I have to write the needle marks uh, or when I have to enter the bar number. But we are not perfect, even with the flexible nib. He does things well, but does other things less well. Uh, so I also discarded the flexible nib. Uh, wait. Test with and have a nib that remains flexible. Uh, Although this pen does not allow me to draw some scenes that are important in musical notation. The musical nibs of the past had this characteristic, but also possessed a different tape processing. Nothing to do. Uh, I have to put this fountain pen down too. Flexible is impossible with music. I want to try a parallel pen of the pilot. It has a 2.4 mm nib, but this is a fine for mensural writing. In fact, this type of nib is nothing more than an exaggerated, sorry, exaggerated stab nib. It looks like an italic because it is sharp, very wide in one direction and very thin in the other. This is to maximize the differences between the two lines. But you know that one of the main characteristics of the parallel pen is that it can also write on the edge. In this way, it gives us a subtle trait. It must be admitted that uh, this writing instrument is quite versatile but inappropriate for musical writing. When I try to use it to write the head of the note, I realize that it's not impossible to make it uh, make a small circumference. No way. Now we have understood that there is only one solution to write music, and it's called the musical nib. The musical nib has the type work of the and uh, all sides, and as an almost oval shape when we look at front uh, from the front. The nib has a particularity that makes it unique. It has two cuts instead of one, which firm free pranks. A nib with two slides has the function of providing maximum power to the tip, giving it the ability to work with any angle of attack on the sheet and the slide in any direction. In other words, have a nib that writes large and small. He writes full-bodied, and if I wish, he is capable of writing even thin. Returning to our score, as you can see, I have the opportunity to write the treble K. Do you know that this is called the K of G? It depends on the fact that the K resembles the letter G, which is in which in international notation corresponds to the note out G, or, or because this uh, final curl is a reminiscent of the curl on the violin's anklet. Okay, close this little digression. 
Finally, I can write the cause of the musical annotation, composed of many signs and symbols of different thickness with a single fountain pen. Now I write a number, now I write even smaller. Any made in this way solves the problems of musicians. We musicians, when we write music, we have the habit of uh, tilting the pan uh, on one side and using the hand turning uh, to bring the rise to upwards. Now, if I want to write notes or add an alteration, I just need to tilt um, the pan, uh, putting an uh, almost perpendicular position. Now I'm going to show you some examples. This is thin, and this is a broad nib. And I can write in italic style, but I can uh, uh, even use it in a reverse nib to get an even more subtle mark. With the strike nib, I would not have been able to make it uh, small, but it is fine for me to write prime time, three quarters, because I need a massive body. This is the singular thing about this musical nib. If I tilt it, the stroke becomes thick, but when I use it like uh, this, it becomes thin. In other words, the processing is so varied and smooth on all edges that this nib works in all conditions. Even in ordinary writing, we can observe very significant variations of the stroke that give the handwriting the possibility of adopting a minute or full-bodied characters, similar to a zoom nib. All this obviously requires an effective feeder and always ready to give the ink flow, and for this reason the third prong was introduced. You know that a nib works on the principle of the capillarity. Here's a, a bad uh, dragon, but I hope the nib uh, um, and the sheet of paper are understandable. The capillarity holds the ink in the slot, ops in these slots of the nib, and as soon as it touches the paper, which has a, a hygroscopic characteristic in these fibers, like a magic switch, the ink flows uh, is activated, and as soon as the nib is uh, lifted, this flow stops. Magical, isn't it? But each fountain pen has a nib that always has a dry side, that is, uh, where well, the ink cannot reach, and this is due to the cut that has been impressed on it, to, to say it in a simple way. Instead, on this nib, uh, that has the tip working in each side, observe what happens. I can use it like a brush to paint a wall. It flows up, down, right and left without ever interrupting the inflow. It becomes uh, the ideal nib for making circles and dots, uh, for notes, legs, writing and everything else you need for musical notion, notation. Now I reverse it, flip it over, but the surprising thing is that there is no the slightest hesitation, hesitation or interruption of flow. Everything is homogeneous. The ink is not held in the nib because it finds a way to bend it to the paper at every angle. A nib uh, that might look like this in terms of versatility is the Aurora uh, Gocha nib, drop nib, that I tried recently and I will soon as providing the English text version. <laughs> Sorry for my English, but you know. The characteristic of the uh, drop nib um, may actually recall a musical nib like this, but only in some ways. Now let's see how the musical nib behaves when I when uh, we use it for daily writing. Thank you for watching this video. If you like, subscribe to the channel and we'll happy to create new videos. I leave you to the images. Ciao da Marco Chiari.